So a couple of weeks ago, we had a new friend arrive in the Anchorage, apparently sent by you guys. He's a member of our SSL backstage, and I guess you guys were all looking for me, of course, when I was taking some downtime and had shut everything down, and wondering if everything was good, where the hell we went, what happened. And our friend JP is on SSL backstage and saw all the comments, and he was up in Mexico at the time. So he got on backstage and says, hey, I think I know where he is. I'm going to go find him and rattle his cage, and we'll see what's going on. <laughs> and there he is. So JP sailed in in the middle of the night a couple of weeks ago, and he's been here just hanging out ever since. But yeah, really nice to meet him, and uh, he's a member of our backstage also. There he is. So you guys are going to meet JP today because we're going to go for a ride. But first, I got to go build the ride. So, I'm sure many of you have noticed that there has been a virtual revolution in the amount of electric vehicles hitting the market lately, especially the next generation of e-bikes. Now, this technology has made a difference to us because it's opened up a whole new world for us where we can travel with something easily on the boat that we can take ashore anytime we want and it opens up a whole new area that we can travel to. If we want to go on an excursion, we can go much further and much faster. And with the added bonus that we still have enough power from our solar panels on board to charge the electric bikes. Perfect. Well, we have a new device arrived today that has even more advanced features that I'm quite excited to test. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what this one can do. And for a bike with advanced features, it's at a very affordable price point, which I'm also excited about. So this is the brand new Tyson from Haybike. And from what I've heard about it, it sounds really, really cool so far. And I've actually seen a couple of the new reviews on it, and I can't wait to see if it lives up to what I've heard. So let's crack this puppy open and get her built. Now, as you can see, it comes pretty clean and easy out of the box. That didn't take too long, and it looks good. It's about, uh, I'd say, 90% free built. It's got the cargo rack already installed, the rear fender, rear tire, obviously, suspension system. We just have to mount the handlebars up here, mount the seat and the post, put the front wheel on, and the front fender. It's got a couple of boxes. One has the foot pedals and the tool kit for assembling it. One has the headlight, which is cool, I like that feature. And the other is the charger. Now this is a folding bike, so this is the folding mechanism here, and that means that the battery is gonna be right inside there. So we'll open that up shortly, but first we'll focus on putting the front wheel on first. All right, well, got it together. <laughs> a little bit of mussing and fussing with a couple of things, but basically it's just a matter of fucking GoPro. Never mind. Okay, so that went fairly well. That was quite easy, actually. The only thing I had to fudge around a bit was the front wheel because I don't have a like a stand for the bike to line up the wheel and everything. So that's always a bit of an issue, but after five minutes of tinkering around, you get it lined up and bolted on. The only other things I had to put together were just the front fender, the light, 
and that's about it. Everything else came pretty much set up right out of the box. You can see that it already has the storage rack on the back, and the only thing I've added is I bought an extra accessory, which is this Rock Bros bag, which is perfect for storing my, my drones and stuff like that. I've added my bike lock, added a drink holder for a bottle of water when I'm out for my rides, and of course, one of my favorite things is the mirrors. As you know, I like to have the mirrors there. So I've got two mirrors put in the handlebar ends. I've added my cell phone mount with the aluminum clamp on bracket. Fits perfectly. Added a camera mount, of course. And other than that, it has the stock computer right here. We can turn that on in a second. It's got the seven gear Shimano shifter right here. We've got three finger hydraulic brakes. Yes, hydraulic. If you look at these, they are full hydraulics on discs so we got really really nice braking power on this bike so i'm looking forward to testing that and that's not just the front but on the back also full hydraulics and jp just arrived so here is our new friend jp and you reign from islam of harris mexico that's where you came from oh originally where are you from from northern california but many years in kansas city oh, okay so you're used to the sunshine also Yes. But you live on a sailboat. JP's been living on a sailboat like us for how many years? Three years. Three what? years, and it is a Tartan 40. Tartan 40. I remember those. I had a friend who had one of those in Canada. It was like a 32, I think, or a 33, but a nice boat, very nice boat, and wood interior. Yes, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, we look forward to see that. We want to go over and check out uh, JP's boat in the near future. You're welcome to do that. But today we go for a ride, so we just got my bike ready and we just got the cruiser ready. So this is what JP's gonna ride. You remember our beach cruiser? Already set up, got our speaker in the rack, cooler of drinks in the back and a couple of cameras. You can see we got rid of the round storage basket on the back and put on a big square one because the bike came with an extra bracket for a cargo rack but it's supposed to either replace this one, like one or the other, not both. But what I did is I just made a teak bracket here and kind of locked them back to back onto each other so we can have the backrest and a storage basket. So, so far that is working perfect. So this is the one we're testing today and all we need to do now is put in the battery, which is right here. And this is a 15 amp hour, 48 volt battery. So this should have pretty good range on this bike. So that's what we need to do now because this is also a folding bike. So you can see there's the mechanism right there. We just pop this open and pull and she'll open up. Just like so. Now we just gotta watch this harness in here. Take the bike, battery, and slide the chain. And that's it. Okay. Push close and lock. Simple as that. Now we just push the power button and up comes the computer. And you can see it's got a wealth of information. The speed, we can set that between average speed, maximum speed, current speed. It's got a trip odometer and overall you can see, shit, it's supposed to be first test. I got 370 kilometers on it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and the other cool thing about this bike is it is actually has an app control for it. So I've got an app and it's got a full security system built into it. So if anybody triggers the bike, moves it, bumps it, anything like that, there's an alarm system that sends a note right to my phone. That's very, very nice feature. But we'll review that later. First, we're just going to go for a ride. And on the way, we're going to stop at the bike store and see if he's available just so I can get the, uh, the derailleur checked and make sure that the gears are all lined up properly because usually right out of the box, they need a little bit of fine tuning. So that's first. Let's go. So full disclosure, as of filming this part of the review, I have actually had the bike for a couple of months and have put almost 400 kilometers on it. So I have a very good idea about what I like and what I don't like about this bike. So be sure and stick around till the end when I give a very detailed review of all my findings. Okay, first stop. Salut. 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 So far, so good. Haven't fallen off the bike at least. <laughs> it's working good. Yes. Shifting good. It's very smooth. Suspension's very comfortable, I gotta say. That's a big improvement for me. Having rear suspension, that's a game changer. Very nice. Yeah. Never mind. Jackhammer. Just like I told you. <laughs> so, JP, when did you start sailing? 
Started sailing maybe when I was 10 or 11 years old in San Francisco Bay with my uncle. Oh, nice place to start. Yeah. Good wind? Uh, yeah, crazy wind, crazy tides, but it was fun. What kind of boat were you sailing? It was a Cal 30 something. I don't remember exactly how long it was. And then my dad had a succession of Catalinas uh, in Lake Tahoe. Oh, that was my first boat at Catalina 30. Yeah, he had a 20... First sailboat, seven. Anyway. Yeah, he had a 27 and a 28 up there. Mm -hmm. So that was like sailing into the wind equivalent of a flushing toilet. <laughs> yeah, a lot of you guys probably don't know, but I started out as a power boater. It was just like a 21-footer and a chaparral. It was a nice boat. It was fun, but... Once I tried sailing, yeah, I never went back, and then I ended up trading in the powerboat and got a Catalina 30. It was in the early 80s, I think, in 1981 or two. Like a 12 horsepower universal diesel engine. Oh, wow. Not a lot of power, but I had a lot of fun with that boat. But I destroyed a set of sails the first year because I was a bit of a storm chaser. <laughs> Everybody was out doubling up their lines when the squalls were coming through, and I was like, no, what are you doing? Let's go sailing, there's wind. So yeah, I, I pretty much killed the sails the first year, but I had fun <laughs> and learned a lot. So what was the first boat you bought for yourself? First boat I bought for myself was in the Midwest. My son, before he was going to UCLA, decided he wanted to be on the sailing team at UCLA and wanted me to teach him how to sail. So I bought a little Laguna 24. And actually we sailed it the same way that you did. We'd go out in 30, 35 knots of wind and just sail it at about 20 degrees in order to keep us from being blown over sideways in that little <laughs> boat. And then I upgraded to a Beneteau First 29. And tricked into a, a racing boat. Uh-oh, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> jackhammer. <laughs> exactly, jackhammer. <laughs> it sounds like one too. <laughs> Worse, I think. Okay, you're safe. <laughs> so then I bought a Beneteau First 29 that was in decent shape, but I brought it back to showroom condition and made it into a race boat and raced it for a number of years uh, in large lakes in the, in the Midwest. Nice. pedal assist and that does about 30 kilometers. So is this your first time riding an electric bike? Yes. How is it? It's awesome. Getting good exercise while you're chugging illusion. on your cigar? It's <laughs> the illusion of exercise. Yeah, JP's pretty funny, man. Well, we're having a good time hanging out. Today's our first ride and yeah, enjoying the ride on the new hay bike so far. It's been really smooth, comfortable, the seat cushion is phenomenal, i got to admit. The handlebar grips are perfect, for my hands anyway. And the hydraulic brakes, fast. That's what I like. When you need to stop, you can stop. So that's a big bonus for me. So, so far, enjoying it. Now, now we keep going.
¿Listo? Yeah, Booby Rock's always been one of our favorite stops on our around the world. <laughs> yeah, Booby Rock's always been one of our favorite stops in our circumnavigation of the island. We love to come here and sit down and just relax and enjoy the view. It's always very calm and it's beautiful and they've done a lot of work here. I can't believe it. All of this stuff is brand new. They never had any of these docks here before. And all the little pagodas set up, you know, with the sunshade, it's beautiful. They've done a really nice job fixing it up, I must say, because this place was completely destroyed in the hurricanes. It was gone. But now they've got it back up and running again and looking quite good. Well, until the next hurricane, hopefully not. But for now, we're just chilling out and having a beer and getting ready for our next destination. But so far, the ride on the bike has been very good. Making notes, a couple things I like, a couple things I would change, but we'll review that later. So what about JP? What's your thoughts on the island so far? You've been here for what, a couple of weeks? How do you like it? Almost three weeks now. I love it here. It reminds me a little bit of Mexico, but culturally very, very different. Mostly it's culturally different because there aren't that many people here that look like me and I like that. <laughs> but no gringos. <laughs> no gringos, yes. They call me a Mexi gringo in Mexico. I don't know what I am here, but <laughs> I enjoy it a lot. Just a tourist. No, no. Sailors are different than tourists. <laughs> I know. But that's what they think we are, just tourists. Yeah, when they're trying to sell something, that's for sure. Until I tell them that uh, soy el capitan, and then, then they leave me alone. Uh-huh. <laughs> nice, nice. So you've been on this side of the island before? Just on the moto I'm renting. I've never stopped before, so this is a nice, nice break. And when we go on the... On the bicycles, we're going a little bit slower than on the moto, and so I see things that I didn't see before. It's beautiful over here. Well, yeah, is this your first experience on an electric bike? First ever. Never been on one before. What's your thoughts? I like it a lot. I'm very much thinking about how I manage putting one on the boat. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the issue. I'm not about to be so adventurous as you and put a motorcycle on my boat. Plus, my boat's only 40 feet. but. 
an electric bicycle that folds like the one you're riding could be perfect. Yeah, and it is. It's what we like because it folds up and I just throw it in the cockpit, but you can easily put it in a bag and put it on the side of the boat somewhere. Yeah, hang it off the stern pulpit or something. Yeah. That yeah. would that'd be great. But it's like it's like riding a moto and you just what well, we are going almost forty kilometers per hour and you just don't need to go faster than that on islands like this. No, not at all. Even with a moto, I rarely go that much faster, and when I do, I really don't need to. And yeah, that's one of the things. I mean, we don't really need to go that fast. I enjoyed having the motorcycle, but even with the motorcycle, we never went really over 50, maybe 60 kilometers if we felt fast that day, but that was about it. But the electric bikes are perfect because they're all tuned around 30 to 35 kilometers an hour, which is perfect speed. It's great for sightseeing while you're riding. It's a lot of fun, I got to admit. I really like it. It's a nice slow pace and it's free energy for me because I recharge the batteries on the bikes from the batteries on the boat. So it all comes from solar panel. And it's only if we don't have enough sun, we actually charge the batteries on the boat from the engine with I output alternators. But that's not very frequent unless we're using air conditioning. So for the bikes, it's perfect. We're 100% solar powered and I like it. Yeah, you can see I stopped much faster than JP. <laughs> I was doing a brake test. Yeah, I failed. They work good. <laughs> All right. I see somebody we know. Jana. Richie. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hi. What are you doing? You hanging out at Janice? Yeah. Daddy didn't even know. <laughs> oh, be careful. Don't hit the cat. How's my buddy? Hey. <laughs> Where's mommy? <gasps> Where's mommy? Show daddy where mommy is. Uh-huh. <laughs> Where's mommy? Say papa. <laughs> papa. Ay, Hola. Tell me there was I thought you were at the boat. Hi, I was waiting for us. <laughs> <I know. laughs> 
Richie. How are you? Great, how are you? Good. Good to see you. I had a good, I had a good time. Great time. Nice good nice to time. Be, yes. Beautiful. Oh. Hola. No, <laughs> no, no, Wow. Yeah. Ready? <laughs> boom. Yeah. Oh, boom. <laughs> boom. So, of course, now you want to know what I think of the bike. Well, honestly, it's a very interesting bike, I must say that, because it's right in the middle of the price range of what's available, most of the bikes on the market right now. They seem to range anywhere from about a thousand up to, you know, some over three thousand dollars, and this one's kind of in the middle of that, about seventeen or eighteen hundred US. Now I find that interesting because having had several bikes before, this bike has some better features than we find on the premium bikes that cost almost double, including the ones that we've been driving for over a year before this. The brakes are pretty much the best of all the bikes that I've tested so far, as you know. The suspension, I have to admit, is far superior. It's a very ingenious design. I really like it, the way they've constructed the pivot at the base of the bike, with just a small unishock that provides a very comfortable ride on this bike, no matter what the terrain. I also love the app control. That's unique to this bike. I haven't had any other bike that had app control yet. Now there's a few limitations there, and that's some of the things I do want to point out, but so far it's just cool to have. Battery life I'd have to say is mm, it's better than average. It's better than what I expected because with this bike I can typically go pretty much around the island twice on pedal assist three. I mean as long as I'm putting in some effort too which of course I like to because I'm here for exercise not just an easy ride. But sometimes I go around the island on pedal assist two and I do most of the work. I just have the battery there as a backup for when I get tired. And I found that I can go all the way around the island on about 10 to 15% battery maximum. So that's amazing. Because it does still help the ride and just makes it more enjoyable. And of course you can relax because when you get tired, you can let the bike help you get home if you want to. And of course it has the 4 inch fat tires on 20 inch wheels, which means you can easily handle the beach even in loose sand. And that really surprises me. It's a lot of fun just coming down and driving across the beach. Hey man. How are you? Bien, and tú? You? Fine, thanks. Un águila, por favor. You want it cold or extra cold? Extra cold, always extra cold. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. That's the one that you did one. Yes, that's man. Right? One, nice and cold. Gracias, eh? You're welcome. So, what don't I like about the bike? Well, it's very small things actually, nothing really big, so it's mostly to do with some of the electronics and the app and the display. The display is very hard to read, as you can see in broad daylight. It's on in full brightness, but it's also polarized, which means that when I put my glasses on, I couldn't see anything, it just made the whole display go black. So I put a polarized filter on it just to film, so at least I can see it, but it's still very, very dim. Now the other thing I didn't really like is that the bike is fully app controlled, but there's no way to charge your phone when the app is running. And it's designed to have the app running because it runs a live chart the whole time you're out riding. It shows you exactly where you are, stores your ride for as long as you want. But in order to do that, the app has to remain on. And it can't remain on if the phone's not plugged in and there's no place on this bike to plug it in. That's a missing feature. Now all the other bikes we've had have a USB direct output for charging your phone because most people have their phone with them when they're riding their bike. And this one has a full app control, so I don't understand why they didn't put a USB port on this bike. They have a 48 volt battery, so the matter of putting a USB port is actually very easy. So I think that's a bit of an oversight on A-Bike's part, but I'm sure they could probably correct it very easily if they wanted to. But having said that, the app is very comprehensive, so I'm not sure if you can see the display here, but we can go into the bike and it tells you if the bike is on or off, if you've got the auto lock on or off, if you want to set up the alarm system, all of that stuff is right here. You go into settings, you can program the bike with anything you want. You go down, personalize, and you can see, you can set up all of the levels of pedal assist right here. So level one, two, three, four, and five, you can customize to exactly what speed you want the bike to maintain while you're pedaling. 
You can also set your top speed because it comes programmed as a class two e-bike, which has a maximum, I think, of 20 miles per hour, maybe 32 kilometers. But you can unlock that up to 40 kilometers an hour, and that's where I've had it since I've had the bike. Now, the other thing I'm not really fond of is the trip meter. The trip meter resets itself every time you either turn the bike off or take a break in your ride where it times out and shuts down. Now, I have no idea why they would want that because I want the trip meter to reset when I want to reset it. If I want to measure how much actual mileage I get out of a complete charge, well, that might happen over three or four rides. But I can't do that because the trip meter resets every time the computer shuts off. Why? I have no idea because all the other bikes maintain it and they only reset when you want them to reset. The other feature I'm not particularly fond of is the throttle assist right here only responds to throttle as far as what you've programmed in the level of assist. So if you've programmed a pedal assist one, you can use this throttle and it'll only take you up to five or six kilometers an hour or whatever you've got programmed. Level two, level three, same thing. The throttle becomes a potentiometer just for the preset amount of power that you've designated to the pedal assist. Why? I have no idea because that should be independent and should give you full range of motion from zero to 100% of power because when I want to use the throttle, it's just because I want to get out of the way of something or if I'm trying to get across the street before you know a pedestrian or a car or something gets in the way and I just want to get out of the way. I just want to hit the throttle and go, get out of the way, finished. But to do that, I would have to first go into the computer and adjust the power assist up so that I can speed out of the way because otherwise, it's not gonna go any faster than I'm already pedaling. And you can't really accelerate a 70 pound bike very fast if you're just trying to get through an intersection quickly. It takes a bit of power and that's why we have the electric assist. So just another thing to hay bike, I think that's something you should look at because I'm sure it's only a firmware change, but you could change that so that this throttle is always active from zero to 100%. That's it, simple. Now I will say the other electrics of the bike are excellent and very well thought out. Like all of the controls are exactly where they should be. And this has been a point of contention on some of the other bikes I've ridden because things are just not in a position where they feel natural and you have to go out of your way to reach them in order to make them work at a time when you don't really want to move your hands around on the handlebars. You just want to focus on riding and avoiding whatever's in your way. Like if you're trying to activate the horn to tell somebody, hey, I'm coming, get out of the way. This one, everything is in a perfectly natural position. Your hand is right here, and if you need the horn, boom, it's right there. Your signal light, boom, right there. Right, center, left. Everything is right where it should be. Your headlights, tail lights, everything can control right from there. And all of your other sensors, so your pedal assist can be dialed down or up from here. Switch the functions of the computer and power the system on or off. It's all right here with an easy thumb tip control without having to move the rest of your hand. Same thing for this side. Your hand can stay right here. Your throttle's right there. You don't have to move your hand anywhere, just your thumb. You can switch the lights from auto to manual right here so they automatically activate at night. You don't have to worry about remembering or doing anything. And of course, all of your controls for the shifter are right there and all from your thumb. Everything is just natural and in its position where you would expect it to be. It's perfect. And of course, not to mention that it does have a full lighting system. So you can turn your lights on or off, all of them right there. And you can immediately see your tail light and your headlight all come on. The signal system is great. Of course, they're very bright and easier to see even from a distance. And of course, the fact that it has blinker lights on the front and the back of the bike is a very great safety feature, especially at night. This bike gets so much attention down here even, you can't even imagine. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. So when we go riding down the beach, we always get stopped. People wanting to ask questions about the bike, take pictures of it, take pictures of them with the bike. It's just funny to see how people respond to something that is so unique. They've never seen anything like it before. So my overall impression of the bike, I mean, after having putting almost 400 kilometers on it i'm very happy with the bike and aside from those minor things there's nothing that would dissuade me from saying this is an excellent bargain especially at that price point i would take this bike over the premium bikes we had last year for double the money anytime especially considering it's half the money <laughs> but it's actually better built and all of the fittings even are stainless steel so i have no rust on this bike after a couple of months of use right here at the ocean side in a salt air environment that's amazing but I can tell very quickly that this company has put a lot of thought into creating a very good user experience at a very reasonable price compared to what else is on the market. All the details are well thought out. Everything is right where it's supposed to be. The bike is very sturdy, very well built, and I think it's going to last for a number of years, even in our environment. So all I can tell you is this one definitely scores a win from me. So great job, Hey Bike. I really like the bike. Thank you very much for sending it. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, share it with your friends, that always helps us out.
Thanks so much for watching. As always, take care, and I'll see you in the next episode. Ciao for now.